Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was and is and is to come. It's September 20th, 2024. I received a rhema word from the Holy Spirit that's just beautiful today. and I know I want to share it with you. Redeeming the time. Now there's a lot of there's a lot of warfare in the spiritual realm right now, <clears throat> and those who are sensitive to the spirit and operate in the prophetic they know that, uh, and so it's very important to be armored up right now, and to have your faith in the in the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and not your works. But to remember that during these days of evil, that's what they're being called, these days of evil that were to redeem the time. I'd like to share this with you. Colossians 4, verse 5 and 6 says, uh, I'll just read 5, Colossians 4, verse 5. It says, walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 16 through 18 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for discernment in these last days as we await for Jesus Christ to return. We praise the Lord for discernment. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, where is excess, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. <clears throat> so in the last days, it's important that you're not drinking every day <clears throat> to the point to where you're drunk and intoxicated. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you'll know if... You'll know if you're intoxicated or not because your thoughts will tend. It's like the Holy Spirit will go dormant and your thoughts and patterns in your life will tend to go away from the Lord and you'll start to feel the Lord less and less. So me personally, I just abstain. Um, and I think that's important. But it's more than just abstaining, it's redeeming the time. In other words, instead of being in this huge battle all day with the enemy, step out of the ring, tag Jesus into the ring, and let him fight the battle, and rest in the Lord, and trust in him, and have faith in him and his promises. And redeem that time. Spend it praying like right now. Like right now. Spend this time praying for others. And praying for the will of God in your life. I, I want to share some of this with you. I found on Got Questions. <clears throat> it says, uh, what is the meaning of redeeming the time? It says, to redeem something means to buy it back, to regain possession of it. Time is a gift from God, and none of us know how much of it we are allotted. Only God knows how much time each of us has on this earth to make decisions that will impact eternity. See Psalm 139.16. Right here. When God said we should be redeeming the time, he wants us to live in constant awareness of the ticking clock and make the most of the time we have. The context of the command to redeem the time helps us understand what redeeming the time looks like and why it's important. Be careful how you live. And right here it says, don't live like fools. This is the word of God, folks. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. 
Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. And don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. In other words, understand his will in your life and continue to do it. Don't just get tired. Don't get weary in doing good. Press on in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It says, don't be drunk with wine. This, this is a hard word. Because I know there's drinking Christians out there. And they're saved by grace and they can get into condemnation if they start focusing on that too much. But what I'm telling you is the Bible says don't. Don't be drunk in these last days. It says those who drink, drink at night. And those who are drunk, get drunk at night. And it says the night comes where no man can work. Oh, hallelujah. Understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. If you're just drunk every single night. Ephesians 3, 15 through 18 is given. Redeeming the time means that we're careful in how we live. We seek out and employ wisdom. See Proverbs 2. 1 through 15. We seize every opportunity and use it for God's glory. We think through our plans and make sure they align with God's will. And we avoid empty, harmless activities such as getting drunk. Why are we to live this way? Because the days are evil. Ephesians 5, 16. And this is the word I got. Because the days are evil. And we must overcome evil with good. Romans 12 and 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Jesus taught his disciples the necessities of redeeming the time. He said, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no man can work. He said that in John 9 and 4. Jesus was diligent about keeping to his mission. Distractions were as prevalent then as they are now. But he let none of them deter him from preaching and teaching God's word. Very unpopular on social media right now. That was why he had come. Luke 4.43 Don't mind if I preach the word today. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. Though he spent only 33 years on this earth, Jesus changed the world forever because he redeemed the time. Another way we can, redeem, we can learn to redeem the time is by asking God to help us. We should start every morning by committing our day to the Lord and asking him to help us to do something that day that has eternal significance. By, by beginning our day with eternity in mind, we become more aware of spiritual nudges in our hearts. Listen to this. We look for ways we can honor the Lord, help someone else, or utilize our time in productive ways. Sitting at a red light, we can pray for our neighbor. Mopping the floor, we can worship in song. At a restaurant, we can leave an extra big tip along with a gospel tract or a card inviting the waiter to a home church or to a local church, depending on the church. We can evaluate our gifts and interests and find ways to invest them for God's kingdom. Volunteering, serving at church, leading a ministry, taking Bible study to the jails and prisons, and studying to show ourselves approved unto God, all are ways we can redeem the time, 2 Timothy 2, 15. And yes, people still do that. James 4 and, 4, 4, uh, 4 and 14 in closing. It says, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes. It reminds us that our earthly lives are no more than a fog that appears and then quickly evaporates. 
Our money and possessions will be given to someone else. Oh, man. Our jobs will be filled by others. Isn't it the truth? Do you know how many people that I've buried? And everything they owned is just left behind as stuff. You have to clean up and sometimes people leave a mess too. Our jobs will be filled by others. Our families may remember us with fondness, but we'll move on with the lives that didn't include us. All that remains of our lives on earth and that which was invested in eternity in the end, all that matters is what we did or did not do to redeem the time. That's a serious word. Psalm 102.3 and Psalm 144.4. Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Shalom. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. Have a wonderful weekend. This is Minister Paul standing tall on the wall. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. I thank each and every one of the listeners here on this channel. It's been how many years? I got this email from YouTube as a creator and it said something like it had been 4,400 and something days since I first hit upload. Wish I could get you the exact number. Maybe I'll do a video on it. It has this cool little graphic of your very first upload and how many exact days it's been and stuff like that. It's been over 4,000 days, it says. Wow. Talk about redeeming the time. And see, now it's time where we could be spending time with the Lord. And step away from the battle. I know this is for somebody. Step away from the battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. And listen to some worship music. And praise the Lord. And give him praise. I'm telling you. He, he inhabits our praise. He sits on our worship. He inhabits your praise. It's, it's something about I'm a praiser. I praise God and I worship God. I worship God. I always have some, some worship music going. My life is proof. Have you heard this song? My life is proof. Some worship. Walking in the spirit so you don't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Be vigilant. Be sober. Amen. The Holy Spirit won't let me stop on this this topic be be vigilant right here the verse reads 1 Peter 5 and 8 be sober boom be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour what God is saying is, don't jump in that ring and get devoured. Stand behind the full armor of God and having done all to stand and just begin to redeem the time in praise and worship, seeking his will and his word for your ways. May God richly bless and protect you and save your loved ones. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, Lord, would you, could you? We know you can. We know it's possible. Would you, Lord? Would you save all of our loved ones, Lord Jesus? And this we pray in unity, corporately, Lord. We pray together as your, your body, as your bride that you're, you're, you're going to marry at the wedding. Oh, hallelujah. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Peace and Maranatha.